Hello and thank you for listening to the Comlex Instant Podcast. Let's review a case in peripheral vascular disease. Patients with phlebographically confirmed DVT, deep venous thrombosis, of the calf can have which of the following? They can expect asymptomatic recovery if treated promptly with anticoagulants. Um, they may be effectively treated with low-dose heparin. They may be effectively treated with pneumatic compression stockings. Or they may be effectively treated with acetyl salicylic acid or they're at risk for significant pulmonary embolism. So this question is really asking you to understand what phlebographically confirmed DVT means so that you can actually make a decision for the patient. The answer here is going to be E. These patients are at increased risk for pulmonary embolism. Low-dose heparin and pneumatic compression stockings have been shown to be effective prophylactic against DVTs. However, they're not effective against established thrombosis, the treatment for which is therapeutic heparization. Salicate has not been convincingly shown to have either a prophylactic or therapeutic role in the treatment of DVT. Even following prompt aggressive treatment of DVT, of the calf, as many as half of the affected patients will develop symptoms of chronic venous hypertension and a large number will have abnormal venous hemodynamic findings. Untreated venous thrombosis of the calf may propagate into larger popliteal veins and cause life-threatening pulmonary embolism. So that was a quick review of deep venous thrombosis. Again, the key point here is that low-dose heparin and pneumatic compression stockings, they have been shown to be effective prophylaxis against deep vein thrombosis. However, they're not effective against established thrombosis. And the treatment for that is therapeutic heparization to prevent any kind of a significant pulmonary embolism. Let's review another board review question. Following aortic reconstruction, the viability of the sigmoid colon can most reliably be evaluated by, is it intraoperative measurement of the inferior mesenteric artery stump pressure, intraoperative Doppler arterial signal in the sigmoid mesentery, or is it intraoperative observation of bowel peristalsis, or postoperative sigmoidoscopy, or postoperative barium enema? This is a difficult question. Um, the correct answer is postoperative sigmoidoscopy. So let's go over why. Well, the viability of the colon can be evaluated intraoperatively by Doppler auscultation of the bowel mesentery and serosa, observation of bowel peristalsis, and measurement of the IMA stump pressure. A strong pulsatile Doppler signal in the mesentery, active sigmoid peristalsis, a chronically occluded IMA or patent IMA with stump pressure greater than 40 presage viability of the sigmoid colon postoperatively. Now, however, none of these observations excludes the possibility of late sigmoid ischemia. Serial postoperative sigmoidoscopic examination, therefore, is the best predictor of ischemic colitis and in experienced hands allows the assessment of the depth of the ischemic injury before frank perforation has occurred. Barium enema is not as accurate as sigmoidoscopy in determining the depth of injury and carries grave risk for contamination by barium and feces if perforation does occur. Okay, so just to review, patients um, who come in and you want to check the viability of the colon. You can do that intraoperatively by Doppler auscultation of the bowel mesentery. You can do it by observation of bowel peristalsis or measurement of the IMA stump pressure. Keep in mind that several factors such as a strong pulse, IMA stump pressure greater than 40, or a chronically occluded IMA, um, all of these factors, you know, are going to tell you about the viability of the sigmoid colon postoperatively. But none of these actually tell you the possibility of late sigmoid ischemia, and that's why you do the sigmoidoscopy to get the depth of the injury and to get the late sigmoid ischemia before it turns into ischemic colitis. Thank you for listening, and good luck in your complex board preparation.